Hello there, this is Critical from Critical Media, just taking a look at the 2023 release of Mimi's Tales of Terror. This is a book from Junji Ito, or should I say more accurately, Hirokatsu Kira and Ishiro Nakayama. It is an adaptation after all. And what we usually do with this channel is give you an idea of what to expect if you ever come across these books in the wild. So we go over the exterior, some bonus material, art and plot points, and then a brief review at the end. Now, yes, as I just prefaced, this is more so an adaptation by Ito, so the story isn't originally from him. But the irony is that uh, Kira, he predominantly drew, drew these stories up from true horror stories in Japan. So there is a lot of parallels with what Ito has done, because he also kind of did the same thing, drawing from real-world scenarios and applied it to his horror. So you will find a lot of parallels and a unique angle to that. But anywho... At least going into the nature of our channel here. Yes, at least on the exterior. It is, in fact, a dust jacket release. So yes, pretty much just a gloss figure for Mimi herself. The text. A nice traditional spine with the other Edo books. So yes, it's pretty much well-ribboned. And keeping that red, white, and black aesthetic, it's almost like you can't lose with that one. Yes, it just keeps that on. I think that's from the, forgive me, what is it called? The encircling, forgive me, the Scarlet Circle, that's it. That's the name of that tale. But underneath the dust jacket here, a pretty striking hardback. And no, it's not like a sensor where it had that lovely art underneath. Um, this time it's just a white uh, dust jacket, but that's okay. Because this hardback, wow, they really did, they did go out of their way to make it special. So yeah, I've always mentioned how much I have a, an appeal to the emphasis Ido puts on hair anytime he does it. It's almost like him showing off his line work. Again, a very striking spine. There's actually a nice pattern to it as well. And a very haunting exterior. Holy crow. Um, it looks like almost a school kid's uh, notebook of scribblings, right? Doodlings and whatnot. But far more methodical, far more menace and in intent as per Ido, I guess. So it has that right kind of uh, haunting to it. And I guess for the bonus material, like many others in uh, Ido's releases, there's not too much in terms of bonus material, just an afterword. But, uh, you know, being an adaptation, it is interesting to see that uh, Ido himself, he didn't even know about the, the original book. I Forgive me, I think it's called Shin Mimi Bukuro. Forgive me if I butchered that. But um, essentially, even he was unaware of, you know, Kira's work. So it's nice to see that his editor actually brought something to him and he liked it so much that he worked on it pretty quick. This book was pretty much done in like 2021, 2022. And a nice little tidbit, uh, the white space here, the art here, is actually from Kira as opposed to Ido. The book and the story is all Ido's work. But anywho, now at least going into the story and plot points, um, the book itself, it more prefaces like a story collection like the other story collections from Ido, just from another author. And you know what, maybe just before I go in, you get this awesome bookend here, just revealing several of the uh, monsters you'll see in this book, as well as, yes, on the exterior, holy crow, talk about striking. But um, anywho, you'll see what I mean with the table of contents here, that it is more so a story collection. So there's not too many like ongoing linear threads. There's really just the character of Mimi herself and her uh, boyfriend, Naoto, or should I say her paramour. But uh, you'll see how some stories are very brief, like the very first one, it's like a few pages. Some of them can be like 30, you know, so it's a nice bit of diversity there. And at least to go into the stories here, uh, on the utility poll, I'll kind of skip the short stories because to be honest, if I talk about them, that's all there is to it, right? So I'm just going to jump to the end of it, but yeah, I guess you have a preview of that kind of story there. But probably the first striking one is this one here, The Woman Next Door. So Mimi, it seems like, you know, just bad things seem to follow her. It kind of reminds me of uh, like Uzumaki or even, uh, what's the word, even the part of uh, Tomi. But anywho, yeah, she just happens to encounter or be around these weird events. So yeah, she just happens to move into a new apartment complex you know she's hearing noise from her neighbor she goes to complain to him and she's kind of surprised that this guy's neighbor doesn't even complain or say anything as a matter of fact there's this big mystery behind her as you definitely see here this awesome silhouette design that Ido went with 
And you could tell he's actually used this concept before. As I mentioned, you'll see a lot of parallels with Ido's other works. It's just interesting to see it from a different author. Um, but pretty damn striking, that's for sure. Uh, but probably the highlight of this book is seeing how much Ido's art has matured over time. How he's become more cinematic. Because the way this progresses, where she's peeking through the wall, <laughs> it sees her. And then as she's scared to look again, bam. I love how that well that sold, especially the uh, ongoing scene here. I'll try and skip it so that you guys can be wild by it, but it's awesome. It's a nice. Um, it almost reminds me of the other stories that he had. Like he also had a neighborly story, uh, several neighborly stories in other books. But yeah, uh, I guess on to the next one here, rustling in the grass. This one pretty brief, and what I like about this narrative, and even even Ito has mentioned it and used this before. You usually try to keep the audience or the viewer more so in suspense or of the fact that you can't explain what's really going on. That's what true horror is. Horror of the unknown. That's what we are as human beings, right? So yeah, this one, just these weird sounds happen. They feel like something keeps hitting the ground, but they can't find it. Unfortunately, they come across this situation with this unfortunate soul. Kind of reminds me of the whole Amigata Forest uh, concept. Again, Ido even did that one as well. But um, a nice short and brief one. It's more creepy. It'll more creep you out than, you know, be a standing horror. But uh, probably the first narrative that I would say definitely starts to get into that esoteric aspect is grave placement. So, again, I guess she didn't like her first apartment, so she moves into another. Again, a good price, except her backyard is literally a cemetery. And, yeah, just this creepy aspect of, uh, what's it called? Yeah, this, this, these graves somehow moving on their own, or should I say their tombstones just changing directions and all that for some ominous purpose. But I definitely appreciate how this one comes around, and, you know, it kind of educates you. kind of tells you about uh, Hirotatas, or, sorry, Hirotas or whatnot, uh, the human soul, so to speak. But, yeah, very unique in that sense. Very weird, uh, narcissistic, complex aspect. But um, you'll see what I mean where Ido gets to show off these awesome two-page spreads, which the book benefits by. So yeah, just this very haunting set of eyes just watching you. Not just the characters, but even the reader themselves. So the effect definitely works, that's for sure. Uh, but now on to one of the more intriguing stories as well, Seashore. So it's just like uh, just a bunch of friends headed out to the beach just to enjoy one of the final days of summer. And I love how Ido can set up horror. Like he, It's like he's definitely mastered the way publishers even issue out their books because he nails the page turn so well. You know, you're obviously seeing this ominous being. You know it's messed up. And then when you finally see it, holy smokes. Don't worry. This is like nothing to do with the core of the story. But man, that... That just, just goes to show you, you know, definitely knows how to stage a book very well. But uh, as mentioned, they're at the beach. They're getting this ominous uh, girl tear telling them about how there's so many deaths in the area. And how something draws folks into the water or whatnot. Just a very intriguing concept. And again, another great setup to a page where, yeah, he's, he, he's trying to make his friends try and see something out in the water. And just like with uh, the characters in the story, again, right smack dab in the middle of this book, it's almost like it was intentional. Right? Like the book is about 220 pages. This is about the 110 page mark. He has this image here, and you're also just as much like the characters, looking for any sort of hint as to the real effect here. But very unique. Let's just put it that way. Um, anywho, probably my favorite of the entire book here is Just the Two of Us. This one is very haunting. Like, this one actually gets to me, just not outside of just the art in it, but the concept of it. So it does begin, unfortunately, with uh, this woman here who emulates herself. But I will say, man, it does give an opportunity for Ido to once again show off his brush. Because, man, what incredible design. Sad, but still oddly, beautifully drawn. I can't deny it. But um, it essentially revolves around this poor girl here who she's, I don't know, her family's going through something. I don't want to reveal too much, but they, she's basically staying with Mimi's family and she's very clingy. Like she will literally hold on to you. 
and not let you go because she's worried about some sort of shadow man or whatnot. But I just love how this story constantly conveys itself because, yeah, you start seeing these marks and you start looking at it a little bit differently. I'm sure if you're watching, you're probably already thinking it too. But possibly some of the best sells ever is this. Like, again, not too much because there's more to it, but just these pages alone, very creepy. Like, this would haunt my dreams. It probably did, actually. I wouldn't be surprised. But, man, such a dope turn at the end. Nice and cathartic as well. I like the, the way the story ends overall. But, again, um, to kind of show how much Ito's art, or should I say his techniques, have really matured over time. What's unique here is that they call in this uh, priest to basically purify the home. And it's incredible how, with Ito's line work, as you can literally see here, he really makes it convincing that this invisible creature, whatever it is, is really being struck against the walls. Like, you could actually see it. It actually does sell you on that idea. So, awesome that he's really mastered his craft, Ito. So damn good in that sense. And uh, the aforementioned Scarlet Circle story... So, this one, short and sweet, it's, it's more creepy over the concept of, you know, they, one of her friends, their family is basically renovating one of their old homes as they were doing it, basically tearing it down. They discovered this weird room buried underneath their home. There's no doors into it or anything. It's like, why does this room even exist? And yet, and it's, by the way, like it has a floor mat and everything, but there's this red circle on the wall and it just draws people in. Very similar to uh, other tales, as you may know. But um, just found that very unique in that sense. Um, it's more so just the creep factor, I'd say, that really sells you on it. But yet another idea and an another point of emphasis where it's one of the few stories that actually has that connecting thread between at least Mimi and her boyfriend. Like how, how far it goes. So very intriguing, very well played. Even just, this, just the design of this may seem simple and probably just a finger technique, but still, it's it's definitely effective for sure. And yeah, there was a final story here, the uh, sign of sign in the field. It's really brief. Again, it's like a three pager, so don't want to talk too much about it. I'll leave that one for you guys. It's but we've all kind of experienced what happened here. Like you, you kind of look twice kind of situation. Now, in this case, uh, Mimi's Tales of Terror afterward, it is a bit of a fourth wall where Ido himself actually stars in it. He draws himself in a kind of a comical way almost. And um, he's just kind of relaying how he was approached by his editor to do this and how he was su so surprised to see so many parallels, even down to the point of certain stories, like even this one where he mentions this creepy house with a second floor. He literally used this story for that... Um, clubhouse tale in this release over here from tombs so very unique in that light and i guess they call this a bonus but it's really just the final story this one here monster prop it's probably the only one with uh, color splash pages just at the beginning and as the name suggests it really is that um, this girl when she was younger her and her friends went into a creepy house they saw this weird you know this one knocked down sliding door and this weird hair or some sort of bush or whatever that would move and make a noise when you touched it creep the hell out of them so go figure ironically now it, you know it fast forwards to her career where she's working at a horror amusement park of all things and you know they're just coming up with new ideas to make their you know attractions even better she mentions her childhood memory and they actually go through with it turns out to be a little too good of an idea and there is an interesting angle to this book where you, you probably don't see it coming, but there's a whole different angle to it. And I like how it does go through that dimension. It definitely speaks a lot of that Edgar Allan Poe aspect. You know, that guilt factor. Just really well conveyed, I will say. Uh, possibly one of the best in this book. Uh, personally, I still think, you know, just the two of us is just my favorite one, but this one's probably a close second. But damn awesome, nonetheless. Uh, but anywho, it's no longer about me at this point. Hopefully you guys maybe come across this, give it a chance. Um, you know, Ido seems to be doing a few uh, adaptations upcoming, so just be on the lookout for those. But nonetheless, I wouldn't mind hearing your thoughts down below, as always.
Y'all folks take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.